a thin uniform rod of mass m and length l is bent into shape of regular hexagon actually you can pause and read this uh, problem i'm going to explain uh, what is given by actually drawing the uh, diagram so this is what is given there is a rod which is thin straight has mass m length l this rod is bent into shape of a regular hexagon and if i have to draw hexagon for this rod it will be too small so i am going to ignore the scale and draw hexagon that looks like this and assume that it's the same long uh, rod that was used to create this hexagon let's see the problem i can probably explain a couple of things here uh, so if the moment of inertia mi of the unbent rod about a perpendicular axis through its center is ml square over 12 then what is the moment of inertia of the rod in the hexagonal shape so when this rod is not bent in the straight form then its moment of inertia about an axis passing through its center so if i am assuming that rod is thin and indicate this point as center of the rod then axis passing through this center is actually perpendicular to the plane of this paper and so the rotation is going to occur like this this moment of inertia is given as ml square over 12 normally even for such a simple shape of a straight rod with length l and mass m if you have to prove this you will have to use cal calculus but if this fact is given and you want to find moment of inertia of this hexagon then you don't really need calculus often times majority of physics problems at high school level can be done simply on basis of algebra and that's what we will do here so we'll accept this which is given as a fact without proof and try to find using it moment of inertia of this hexagon so let us understand where the axis are uh, located so in case of this straight rod when it rotates like this along about an axis passing through plane of this paper because the rod is thin i can as well draw axis in the plane of paper and make this rod rotate in this manner and it's going to be the same moment of inertia given by ml square by 12 however you have to be very sure how this figure is rotating it's rotating like this so we'll consider axis is passing through plane of this uh, hexagon that means if i now i can draw a diagrammatic like this and so this is the axis passing through the center of the hexagon this is the situation in this case so now you can see that this rod which is one sixth length of the given rod is rotating at distance uh, let us call this distance as d and it's rotating along with other five more rods so we'll concentrate simply on finding moment of inertia of only small piece of one sixth length we call that as piece one this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six 
and then if we find moment of inertia of piece 1 about center C at distance D from its own center then we will multiply that moment of inertia with 6 because it's a scalar quantity that moment of inertia and so we will say that whatever is moment of inertia of rod 1 6 times that will be the moment of inertia of the whole hexagon that will be the approach what do we need we need the distance d because we are going to use the parallel axis theorem we are trying to find moment of inertia of this rod given its moment of inertia here and we want to find at distance d which is the situation here the parallel axis theorem says that you can find moment of inertia about point C if you know moment of inertia of this rod about this point which is given as and now I am going to uh, substitute instead of capital L each piece M L square over 12 analogous to this one which will be moment of inertia M I about its own axis for point C to this will get added because the distance is D M D square uh, and we don't know D so it will be M D square at this point the, so this quantity is to be uh, found by finding actually D so the total moment of inertia of only one piece rod 1 at C is ML square over 12 which is obtained from the given for the whole rod and we simply substitute for capital L and capital M as small L and small M. We don't want to put L over 6 at this point because you can see that when these quantities are squared and denominator multiplied by 12 there is unnecessary burden of carrying mathematical uh, arithmetic uh, manipulations so we don't want to do that we will substitute only in the end when it's required and the form is very simple so let's find what D is so D can be found using trigonometry so I'm joining uh, center to this end as you can and I'm not going to uh, make this uh, figure difficult to read by writing every angle and everything in it so I'm going to use some other similar triangle so this angle is 60 which is this angle how this angle is 60 <coughs> <coughs> couple of ways you can find what is the sum of all angles of a hexagon and divide that by 6 thereby you will get this angle as 120 since you are joining the diagonal you are joining opposite ends so this becomes a diagonal and the angle is half which is 60 to find that this is 120 uh, refer to your geometry if you don't want to hear uh, the quick way to find this is you were going uh, this is not known to you yet in this direction if you went straight instead of taking turn I'm assuming that we are trying to traverse the hexagon so instead of going straight you followed the sides of hexagon and you had to turn through some angle which we do not know then you start going like this but again you turn this way and start following the hexagon same thing here instead of going like this you turn so this way you go on turning and you come back here so when you come back here you have gone through 360 degrees and you turned actually once second third fourth fifth and sixth time so this is divided by 6 so every time you made a turn of 60 degrees 
So if this is 60 degrees, then supplementary angle is 120. You can find it. This is possible only in case of uh, regular polygons. Otherwise, you can divide this into triangles and for each triangle, the sum is 180 degrees, one number of triangles. Very many ways, but that's not the point here. So we'll assume that this is 60. If this is 60, this is 30. So if you have a right angle triangle which has 30 and 60 degree angles, then we know how to, and I'm going to draw it like this. So here is 60 degrees. This is 30 degrees. Side opposite of 30 degrees angle is we were beginning to, uh, uh, we had already started with assumption that one piece is length L, so this is L over 2. Then this piece will be twice, which is L. So we can find this one and, oh, uh, actually I drew this triangle to uh, recall that we know that if this side is 1, then this is 2 and this is square root 3. By showing uh, L, L over 2, we already have that here. We don't want to do that. So my D actually corresponds to square root 3. So how do I find what D is? So it will be in the same proportion. So what are the proportions? Square root 3 over 2 is equal to D over and this is L. So I have D equal to L times square root 3 over 2. So D square is going to be 3 over 4 L square. That's what I needed here for D square. So my moment of inertia now for one rod about the center C is M L square over 12 plus M 3 over 4, this is the value of d square, ml square over 4. Now if I add this, I have 12 in the denominator, so I multiply this by 3, make it 12, this by 3, make it 9. So 9 plus 1, 10 ml square over 12. So this is my moment of inertia of one piece. So total moment of inertia is going to be 6 times. So that's going to be if I multiply this by, uh, let me write total mi, by 6, that will be then 5 ml square. 6 will go in the denominator, it will divide. Actually, I could have simplified this as 5 over 6 ml square. So, 6 times is going to be 5 ml square. Now, this form is much simpler to substitute your original quantities m and l and what is the relationship between uh, small m and large l that is only six times so if you substitute that's going to be 5 m over 6 and l is capital l over 6 square and so simplify this and you get 5, 6 times 6 is 36, times 6, 36 times 3 is 108, times 2 is 216, capital M L square, and that's the answer. So you have hexagon, which is revolving around an axis passing through the plane of the paper, then the moment of inertia is going to be 5 over 216 ml square. Now this capital M is the mass of the original unbent rod, capital L is the total length of the unbent rod. And so you can uh, see that without any calculus we can do this problem simply using algebra provided 
this fact is given.